What's going on everyone, this is Raheel and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be showing you why I like to use the pipenv virtual environment manager uh, instead of some other programs like pyenv or virtualenv. Of course this is not a full tutorial of pipenv. If you do want to see a full tutorial, Corey Schaefer has actually done a great job discussing the ins and outs of the pipenv virtual environment manager and um, also comparing it to other environment managers pretty thoroughly. So feel free to go check those out. This is just going to be my opinion. So yeah, let's get straight into the video. So I've just loaded up this math library directory in my uh, WSL environment. And essentially this is just gonna be for my um, Python math library tutorial I did a few uh, YouTube videos back. Um, essentially this one actually has a pip, pip file already had in, inside of it. So if I just do um, ls right here, you'll see that I have my actual math library.py file, but I also have a pip file right here. So if anyone's not familiar with uh, the requirements file or requirements.txt file, the requirements.txt file essentially is a file that you can create that essentially um, lists down the pip packages that you want Want installed automatically it's great for version control systems but essentially it's just a manual it's just a manual process that the pip package managers goes through so it's just like pip uh, or pip3 dash r requirements i believe something like that um essentially that one you have to do yourself but the great thing about activating a pipm environment is it does most of the things manually and it activates the um, python version installs the uh, correct environment uh, dependencies um, as well as all the other packages needed and also updates those packages where necessary every time you apply that pipm um, environment so let's say you pull down some changes from a github repository it's all good to go there but i'll, I'll show you what you have over here so we're just accessing it via the system python right now uh, but i want to go into the sandbox environment so i just do pip m and we just write that command you can see we have some options like check clean graph install right but what we want to do is we just want to activate the virtual environment so that's going to be pip m shell and if we just run out right now we'll just do um it should just load in just one second Alrighty, and it's just set it up our uh, environment based on our pip file right here. So it's just saying creating a virtual environment. And it's going off of the same um, Python environment that was created at the time um, I created this directory. So it's essentially um, respawning that environment from a previously removed virtual environment, which is nice. So if you want to see the contents of the pip file, it's just what we have over here. Essentially, we have uh, three packages that are currently installed underneath the actual um, virtual environment, which is going to be PineVim, Python LSP server, and the request module. Pretty standard packages. We have two for NeoVim and one for actually accessing HTTP requests or any other type of requests. But uh, we're accessing all of them. This is just a wildcard operator. Um, it's basically the same as typing in requests, open brackets, all close bracket. Essentially, since these are automatically added in, um, just by in running the pipm install command, um, that actually makes it so we don't actually have to look at a different package manager or rely on a different package manager and then manually insert those packages into a requirements.txt file, which is nice. I'll demonstrate right here. So let's say if I wanted to install, let's say, um, pi g object. I'm not sure what that is, but I'll install it right now and it has in installation succeeded as it said so it locks those dependencies in the pip file dot lock file we saw earlier and then it inserts them into our actual pip file which is nice so i'll show you what the updated pip file looks like in just one second pip file and you can see now it's inside of our pip file so next time anybody actually loads this repository um or actually let's say pulls in those changes from the pip file which we have uploaded or pushed them to the repository and they can just write down pip and update and that will actually update all the dependencies um it of course just run over all of the pip file and the pip file dot log instructions um and then we should be all good to go so it's a fairly automatic process which is nice and you also don't have to specify any exact versions of python it goes off of your system python and you can install custom versions of python if you wanted to from all sorts of directories without actually actually having to install new versions of python every single time so it makes updating very easy and makes installing packages extremely easy and it's a full-on automated process which i really enjoy one thing that i don't really like that much is that it actually does keeps the um, virtual environment activated as you traverse through directories, which is good for some use cases if you have multiple environments and multiple directories. But um, I like to actually um, deactivate the environment once I leave that directory if I'm doing something else. Um, of course, this is easily, easily solved by my tmux environment, but let's say I just wanted to do pipm-rm that just removes the environment, and then I can just correspond a new shell um, or source the actual command prompt removing that um, environment from the actual shell. So it doesn't say via system here anymore, which means we're just using our system Python. 
And that essentially concludes why I like Pipm. It's very basic for my use case. I don't like it. I'm not doing anything too advanced. I just want it to be a very automatic system and especially great for version control, sending a um, pip file to a GitHub repo or sorry, a Git repo of whatever you want um, and allowing maintainers to actually have a fully updated environment and keep up to date with all the packages without having to manually update packages each time. But that essentially concludes why I like the Pipm package manager. It's very streamlined, very automated for um, essentially uploading to a uh, GitHub repo or uh, any Git repo for that matter, and allowing all maintainers to have an updated um, version of the all pack Python packages without having to manually update them themselves. Of course, there are all alternatives to this program. It's not the uh, first program to do something like this. And it does have very unique advanced features that are dedicated to this program, but nothing that I use specifically. Um, of course, feel free to explore those as you will. Be sure to drop a comment down below if you have any ideas or questions about the Action Manager that I can potentially answer. I'd love to hear them out. And drop a like if you did like this video in the end. If you're not subscribed, feel free to subscribe and turn on that notification bell to get more videos like this. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.